Good morning. Welcome to worship here at St. James. I'm Pastor Andrew, and we are so blessed to have you joining us today, whether it be through our radio broadcast or on our YouTube page. Pastor Mark will be our preacher today as he delves into the topic of free lunch from John chapter 6. Just a couple of announcements for you here this morning. Um, we are doing Monday night services at Franklin Park at 6.30. We invite you to come and join us there in the beautiful outdoors. We also have coming up on Sunday, August 29th, the St. James Ministry Fair. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to come on down, check out what kind of ministry opportunities are here at St. James, and to get involved with the church and the community. And finally, as always, we ask that you check either the bulletin our website, or our Facebook page for any updates on what's going on here at St. James. The Lord bless you as we worship him today. And we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God that we have indeed sinned in thought, in word, and in deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our own sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Jesus Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And we pray. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Friends, Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and it's for his sake your sins are forgiven. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus, as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacrament, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes to us from the book of Exodus, the 16th chapter. Now the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked towards the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And in the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, And in the morning, dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle comes to us from the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. And Paul writes, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up 
in love. This is the word of the Lord. And finally, our holy gospel, according to St. John, the sixth chapter. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had only been one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Well, then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the gospel of our Lord. Good morning, and I've got a question for you. I, I got this loaf of bread, we baked it, and gave me this free gift. So I got a question for you. How much do you think I paid for it? Kind of a confusing question, isn't it? I mean, I said it was, it was free. You don't buy free things. They're gifts. It cost somebody, the person who made the bread and baked it and gave it to me, but I didn't pay anything for it. It was free. It was a gift. 
and I mention that because there's a phrase that sometimes people use about free lunch. A, a lot of people will say there's no such thing as free lunch. Mm. Somebody pays for it, no matter where it is or what it is. Jesus was talking all about that today in the story that you heard Pastor Andrew share. It was after the feeding of the 5,000, after Jesus fed all the people with five loaves of bread and, and the two fish. The disciples were sent away and people began asking Jesus for more signs. They, they wanted to have a free lunch. They, they saw Jesus as the guy who could always give them bread and take care of them, a free lunch. Jesus did offer something free. It maybe wasn't just the real bread, the bread like this, but it was a better bread. In fact, Jesus talked about himself that way. He said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Jesus isn't just talking about bread that we eat with our, with our mouths and into our stomach. Jesus was talking about himself, that he's the free gift of God. And it is free for us, the gift of life, the gift of, of the bread of life. Oh, it costs God, but it doesn't cost us. And so there is free lunch. It's to believe in Jesus and have all that he gives to us, our life, and our salvation. Amen. Again, I wish God's grace and peace to all of you from our Savior Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. You know, some of those first verses of our story from John 6 today starts with what seems like to be a really, really positive note. It said that the people came seeking Jesus. The people came and they were searching for Jesus. I mean, think about that. People searching for Jesus. What, what could be wrong with that? Well, Jesus tells us. He, he looks out at the crowd and he calls them out. He says, you're looking for me because you were in the wilderness and you had your fill. You had your free lunch. That's why you're looking for me. They think they found a way to, to beat the system. They saw that the miracle of the multiplied bread in the wilderness, Jesus taking five loaves and, and feeding the thousands, they, they saw this, and now with Jesus, they see a king, somebody who, who can give them free lunch. A free lunch will rule their day. Free lunch, I mean, it's kind of what folks are after, and, and who can blame them? In, in the ancient world, as in a lot of places in the world today, Getting food every day, it's actually pretty hard work. For us, not so much. Oh, in the ancient world and a lot of places, some of the places I've been, it's not easy to actually get food every day. Think about this. H have you ever had your well break at home? I did when I was a kid. We, we were without water. Our well was down. Or have you ever been in, in a town or a city where there's a water ban? I've been there. And so you got to go get water from a store rather than just go to your kitchen sink, turn the faucet, and, and there it is. Now, uh, imagine that that is just a routine fact of daily life. You've got to extend enormous amounts of work and energy for simple things like, like water, like, like food, like bread. I mean, then who can blame the people for searching after Jesus, for, for wanting this this free lunch. Oh, I, I know that God gives us our daily bread, right? That's how Jesus taught us to pray. Give us this day our, our daily bread. And we know that God provides the grain, the sun. He, he puts the soil and, and gives the rain. He gives the brain power for people to transform grain into bread. He, he gives people the energy to work and farm and do all the work that needs to be done. God gives daily bread, but people still need to plant, harvest, mill, Bake, transport, sell, buy. In other words, we still have to do our part. We still work. We, we still earn that daily bread. And, and although God gives daily bread, we know our part. We work. Adam and Eve were, were placed in the garden. They were put into paradise to take care of it, to keep it. They, they were created to be doing the work of God in participating with the work of creation. However, the, the curse of sin is, is that now that work, their work, our work, becomes labor. 
In the sweat of your face you shall eat the bread. That, that's God's curse upon Adam. Even a warning. This comes from the scriptures, right? Paul says, if anyone does not work, neither should that person eat. In other words, we, we know this. There is no such thing as free lunch. We know this. We advocate this. We teach this to our kids, right? There's no such thing as a, as a free lunch. Well, that is, of course, the exception is the story that we heard in Exodus, the, the story of, of the manna in the wilderness, the, the food that appeared every morning in the dew as it dried up from the ground. And they didn't know what it was, but it was bread from heaven. The feeding of the 5,000 where, where Jesus multiplies the, the loaves and the fishes, that, that's a story of free lunch. But, but both of those instances, both of those stories are, are meant to be signs. They're meant to be pointers to, to a greater truth. Here's what the people tried to do, though. They tried to make those signs into, into the rule, into the norm. They, they, they hoped to beat the system. They wanted free lunch. I kind of think that a lot of us dream about that, dream of, of beating the system. I mean, just for simple things. That water example, right? We, we love that system. We don't go to wells. We don't go to stores to get water. We turn the faucet and, and clean water comes out. We dream of beating the system, receiving the news that some distant relative that we never knew, this rich, wealthy person, passed away, and, and I'm at the top of the, of the list, and I'm receiving a fortune from them. Or, or winning the Powerball lottery ticket. We dream of beating the system. But here's the thought. Might that kind of dreaming actually be an insult to God? Could it, could it be, in a way, a form of our complaining? of our grumbling against God, like, like the Israelites were doing in the wilderness, grumbling and complaining against God for what he's only provided? Because when we, all, when we all have enough to eat, we have what God provides, what is it that we want? I mean, think about it. Well, we want just a little bit more. Could it be that our dreaming of beating the system, our, our dreaming of, of winning the lottery, whatever it might be, is kind of like that crowd searching for Jesus for all the wrong reasons, to make him king because they want a free lunch. But we know how life works. You get what you pay for. Give us, God gives daily bread, but we also know we, we work. We do our work. There's no free lunch. The principle is obvious, and, and most of us have had enough experience in the world and in life to know that that's just true. And here is the mastery of Jesus. That the crowd of people searching for him are searching for him for all the wrong reasons. And yet they get offered something that they aren't ready for. You're looking for me because you've had enough to eat, Jesus said. You're looking for me for a free lunch, not because of the miraculous sign that you've seen. Do not continue to work for food that spoils, but for the food that remains until everlasting life, which Jesus said the Son of Man will give you, will give you. And our response, like theirs, was probably cool. What do I need to do? Cool. What do I need to work for? What are the works that God wants us to do? That was the actual question that the people asked. Seems like a logical response. After all, there are no free lunches. You get what you earn. You get what you work for. So the answer from Jesus is what he's offering to give, you don't earn. What he's willing to give, you don't work for. God gives it. What you do to work for it, we're wondering. What, what, there's got to be something, right? There's, there's no free lunch. So Jesus tells the crowd, Jesus teaches us, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. That's it. It means you receive this food for everlasting life as a gift like manna in the wilderness. 
or for that lunch in the wilderness for the 5,000 who ate from the five loaves and the two fishes. This is the work of God, that you believe him who God sent. It's really just basic Christian teaching. It's what sets Christianity apart from every other religion of the world. Think of any other religion there is, even false Christianity. See, basically, all, there's only two religions in the world. The religions that say, you've got to do something, right? I, I do something and I climb up three rungs of the ladder and then I fail and I fall down one. And then I do right and I climb up two. You're always going up and down. That, that's basically every religion in the world except for except for the religion of, of Jesus, of grace. Jesus says, I'll come down the ladder. I'll put you on my back and I'll take you back up the ladder. There's nothing you need to do. This is the work of God, to believe the one whom he sent. When the jailer at Philippi asked Paul, what must I do to be saved? The answer he got was, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. What God offers up for the menu is a heaping pile of, of his undeserved favor, covered with a layer of God not counting our sins against us, topped off with his unconditional love. There's, there's nothing you need to do to make God love you more. There is nothing you can do that will have God love you less. It's what the teaching of by grace through faith for Jesus' sake means. It's Jesus plus nothing. It's so simple, and yet we make it so difficult. Our natural reaction is to keep waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, but. We, we want to get to the bottom line with the trick clause. What's the fix? It's free, but, but all you need to do is what? But with Jesus... That never comes. Free means free. I am the bread of life. The person who comes to me will never be hungry. The person who believes in me will never be thirsty. Period. No strings attached. Oh, there, there is a result to the free gift. There is a result. By grace, through faith, for service. I love those six words. By grace, through faith, for service. Paul, Paul writes about it in that letter to the Ephesians when he says, so live or walk in a life worthy of your calling. It kind of comes like, you know, think about a doctor visit. When the doctor says, okay, if I give you this treatment, if I give you this operation, you'll be healed, you'll walk again. Well, the walking doesn't pay or earn the operation. The walking is the result of the operation. Living the life of service worthy of the calling that you have doesn't mean that now God's going to love you. You, you. You've done the right stuff. Walking a life worthy is a result of receiving the free gift. So what Jesus does offer is, is a free lunch. Or at least it's free to any who receive it. In, in fact, try to pay for it is an insult to God. So if you're convinced that there is no such thing as a free lunch, I want you to listen to the bread of life, the real bread that's come down from heaven. Well, when the folks were searching for him and they tried to argue that Moses provided free lunch in the wilderness, Jesus corrects them that it was the Lord, not Moses, who provided the, the manna, the bread in the wilderness, and it was a sign. It was a pointer of God's free gift of salvation. And that's precisely the point. Today, you and I have a free lunch. Oh, it's been paid for, but not by us. It's a free lunch because the Lord, he's already paid it. Paid it during those six hours one Friday when Jesus is dying, and in those moments he cries out this phrase, to tell us die. We say it by it's finished. And it's a word that could be used to say, 
paid. In fact, it, it was a word, to telestai, that was often in the ancient world written across a bill when the payment was made in full. It's finished. In Jesus, through Jesus, by Jesus. The bill's been paid. So keep searching for Jesus. Keep coming to look to him for a free lunch, the free lunch of his forgiveness. Oh, and where there's that forgiveness, we know there's the promise of his life and our salvation. I am the bread of life, Jesus invites. The person who comes to me will never be hungry. The person who believes in me will never be thirsty. Welcome to your free lunch in Jesus. Amen. We continue as the church united by professing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now continue by praying for the people of God and all according to their needs. Gracious Heavenly Father, just like you provided for the Israelites during their journey through the wilderness to the land you had promised them, give us the confidence to trust in your promises 
to look to your hand to provide all we need for this life and the life to come. Father, sustain those who you send into your harvest. Give your blessings to pastors, to teachers, to Christian leaders, and all who abide in your word, that they would be enabled to work diligently and faithfully for your kingdom. God and Father of all, enable us to walk in humility, gentleness, and patience, that we would bear with one another in love and be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Lord, hear our prayers for the hungry and the homeless. Provide for them not only bread to satisfy their hunger, but above all, the true bread of life, Jesus Christ, who alone can fill and satisfy every need of body and soul. Father, we ask that you show your mercy to those who are sick, hospitalized, undergoing surgery, or recovering. This morning, we especially pray for Rita Mady, Ron Schrader, Betty Klitsky, Marion Maltby, Ardella Wiesnicht, Hallie Rachie, Gertrude Zander, Kevin Zimmerman, for Ron Keister, Russ Schmidt, Krista Hansen, Patsy Close, Paige Crawford, Judy Stocky, Elinda Herlach. Provide doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals to care for those who need health and healing. And it is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.
And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.